Hi everyone, um, new video today. Um, I'm going to chat about um, Joy Division uh, and their, their main two bodies of work. Um, Joy Division were a, a very famous uh, band from Manchester in the late 70s and, uh, and eight, early 80s, and um, uh, probably one of my one of my top three favourite bands are up there with the uh, Kraftwerk and, and, and Throb and Gressel. So I thought uh, uh, they. They only got two records, really, uh, two main bodies of work. They had a, the odd um, EP and uh, um, 12 inch and things like that, and lots of live stuff. But um, so uh, they got as two main finished pieces of work. They have unknown pleasures and closer, and that is it uh, for me. Um, everything else is just just merchandising. Uh, so yeah, I thought uh, I have shown them before. I think in my first video, but I thought it'd be nice to get them out and have a, have a proper look at them because they are original um, first runs, both of them. So I thought we could we could have a look at those now. Um, and this is their first one, uh, released 1979 on Factory. This is Unknown Pleasures, and uh, this is a very famous album. I think you'll, everyone will recognise the cover. Uh, everyone knows knows it when you see it. It's one of those covers. Um, I'll just whip it out and show you. This is this is an original, very first run. You see, it has a, a textured sleeve. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it from this photo. It has a kind of a canvas, uh, painted canvas sort of texture to it, um, which is, looks really quite cool. And if I whip it out and show you the insides, the originals came with either the insert had the inner sleeve either had. Um, Square corners like this one has, or rounded corners as well. But say first presses did come with one of the two variants. There were sort of two initial versions of it, and also uh, the vinyl can come in black vinyl or translucent red vinyl as well. So, um, but all say all the first copies can come with a variation of both of those things. So either square corners, round corners, red vinyl, black vinyl, but they do um, mix up. But they say so they come in the, in the original ones with the textured sleeves on, on both uh, on their pledges and closer. Um, so if I just take this record out to show you, this is printed on the um, pressed on the translucent red vinyl. Um, and if I just actually, I'll take you with me over here, and I will just pop it on this lamp here, um, which I will flick on for you now, and you can perhaps just see. The colour, well, it's sort of looking a bit purple here, but it is actually red. Um, it just goes to show you that it is, is actually sort of translucent. It's very dark. You have to put it on a light, or you won't be able to tell. But it is quite cool. Uh, it's sort of, it has sort of come out a bit purple in this footage. I don't know why. It's sort of a more of a crimson red colour, uh, uh, really. Um, and I'll switch that off before it gets too warm. Um, so yeah, um, that's quite quite interesting. And so it was the first runs that came on on that um, type of vinyl. Um, I'll just pop it away. Um, so Unknown Pledges is an absolute brilliant record, absolutely fantastic. If you've never heard it, I recommend to go and buy it because it is a real real piece of artwork. Um, it was produced by Martin Hannett, who was the producer at Factory, and um, the the production uh, makes both of the. Of their albums, it's, it's a lot of it's in the production. Um, very eerie quality to the production. Um, a lot of uh, delay and things like that, and um, a lot, lots of sort of uh, creepy atmospheres and things, which we sort of edited on later on after the after the recordings. Um, and I think for me, they are a really, really quite special band. There's um, uh, not not a lot of bands like them uh, at all. There'll, there'll never be anyone as good to get um, of that style again. There's no one else like them, and I don't think there ever will be anyone else like them. Um, very special group of people just come together at the right time and make two of the best uh, post-punk albums ever made. Um, so yeah, everything on it is very distinctive sounding as well. Um, Especially on this this one, you can really tell it, that all the musicians are very very distinctive. Stephen Stephen Morris's drums very distinctive, um, especially the way they were produced on this record. Um, they really did sound. They were all recorded separately for maximum effect, so it does sound sort of there's a lot of space and emptiness in between the gaps and things. There's no spillage 
uh, which, which sounds really quite strange and but very cool. Uh, and again, Peter Hook's bass playing, he play, plays very high, um, so you can, you can really pick it out. It sort of carries the melody almost. It's sort of used as a lead instrument rather than a, a, than a backing instrument, which is quite cool. It sort of carries the main, the main riffs, really. Um, and I, I gather he originally started playing uh, high on the bass so he could pick it out when they were playing live as well. And that sort of stuck and, and given them, given them a, a very big chunk of their, their distinctive sound distinctive Peter Hook bass and again Bernard Sumner's guitar as well it seems to sort of the, the bass seems to sort of carry the melody but where, and the guitar sort of sort of dances around it which is really quite quite interesting um, way of doing things and so on top of all that fantastic music you've got uh, Ian Curtis's vocals which are just incredible you know he's not you know technique wise the best uh, singer ever but like the energy he had and the, his lyrics and the, you know, the way his songwriting is, is um, more than makes up for it. It all just all fits together so well on both albums. They are just wonderful, finished, tight, well produced pieces. Really great, um, really great albums. So that's Unknown Pleasures, 1979. And I say the other main body of work is uh, this one, Closer, their second album, released uh, start 1980. Um, Again, produced by Martin Hannett. I'll whip it out and show you again. Um, I've got a Peter Savile uh, design cover again. If I mentioned Peter Savile does all the all the sleeves for um, Joy Division stuff and, and, and most of the stuff on Factory at that time. Um, um, this is a, um, a photo of a tomb. I've got uh, the actual where it is and the name of it escapes me at, at the moment. But um, it was it was. A bit of a uh, caused a bit of a stink at the time because they Ian Curtis, they chose his sleeve and then a, a couple of weeks later Ian Curtis uh, died so they were sort of stuck with a, a band with a dead lead singer and an album with a picture of a tomb on the front which was sort of quite eerie really uh, but they stuck with it and it is a, a wonderful piece of uh, um, a photography uh, and as we can see here it does have a, a slight bit of damage on here there is a small black mark next to the word closer which is say that's not meant to be there but. This is still one of the nicest uh, copies, uh, original copies I've seen. Um, and I'll take the inside out to show you. What I said before about the inserts could either have round corners or square corners. This one has round corners instead of square corners. But again, is printed on um, the red vinyl, like I showed you before. Um, so yeah, both both of them first runs. Um, this album is is very very different and people say it's not that different it, it, I think it's, it's a very very different record I mean um, um, there's a little bit of overlap with the tracks maybe it's there's some very very sort of visceral grinding tracks on here so some of the tracks on the first side especially um, very much an album of two halves the first side some of them the more sort of heavy um, guitar orientated uh, tracks like um, Atrocity Exhibition and, and uh, um, Colony and tracks like that. Um, really, really grinding, churning guitar with lots of um, lots of fuzz pedal and things and really does sound really quite good. Um, and then on the, on the second side it sort of switches again and um, there, there's sort of some more quiet, uh, slow-paced um, stuff like the Eternal and Decades and things like that. Um, but it's, it does have some um, some really great, um, catchy stuff on as well. I mean, on the isolation on the first side, very dark lyrics, but it's a very catchy track. And so on the second side again, Heart and Soul um, is a very catchy song. Um, um, and it's, it's a, another wonderful piece of music. I, I, they were definitely moving in a very interesting uh, direction. Uh, it would have been amazing to see what they would have come up with after this. I mean, they were becoming a growing, grew out from being a punk, a start up, you know, being a quite bad punk band into into quite a special, special band. And so this is the album for me where Ian Curtis just joined the ranks of, um, you know, great great songwriters and. Uh, up, up there with the best. This is this is the album for me where they they stop becoming a, a, a punk band and become a real special band. So um, that is a wonderful piece. I say not to take anything away from Unknown Pleasures. Unknown Pleasures is I'd say just as good, it, but say but in a very different way. It's a bit. It's more sort of dark and uh, sort of 
sort of very, very sinister sounding almost. Um, but um, they're both both wonderful pieces of work, and they are, so they are a, a fantastic band. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing the the, the insides of some original copies as well. Uh, it's always nice to have uh, some original stuff on on vinyl. So um, I hope that was interesting for you. Uh, let me know what you think. Thank you very much.